interesting, you know, that you, you, you had the chance to reflect a little bit on your career and go, wow, I've got to do this, and, and then go, actually, I had that second phase. When was that itch where you went, hmm, you know what, the, there's a whole new sort of generation and a new buzz for women's wrestling happening now, and your career and your legacy was already cemented. Mm-hmm. Was there a part of you that went, ah, oh, man, I, I want to be a part of this now, and I feel like you could not only could you bring something to that, but your career deserves to have the same kind of love and adulation that women's wrestling was getting. Do you know what I mean? There was a convergence perhaps. Yeah. I mean, it, it wasn't necessarily that I was like, Hey, I want a piece of that. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I, and, you know, it, it gets, I guess it started with ironically with the rumble coming up. It was probably the rumble. Um, the women, all women's were rumble that came up and um, having that moment um, to go back and and dip my toes into the current landscape of the women and getting a chance to you know mix up with Natalia and the the the, the Bellas and um and, and Sasha Banks you know um those moments uh it, it's so cool and to hear the stories about like what it meant when you watched me and then you know seeing like Bailey be so excited that we have a spot together you know like little things like that so um I think that's what sparked it to like go that's not it's not that I'm like that's so cool I want more it was more like wow what a unique opportunity also for the fans. You yeah. know what I mean? For them to actually see that. And that's kind of the buzz that I got. And I feel like ever since I retired and really my whole career, I mean, we are doing it. A lot of us, we're doing it for the fans, you know, like um, everything I do out there is is for the fans. And so, you know, to, for, to, to create an opportunity where it's a, you know, multi-generational face-off, for example, in the Rumble, we saw that Charlotte and I, you know, and that was a moment where I just, you know, a lot of it feels serendipitous. You know, it feels like I always said when I retired, I said, hey, listen, if if you guys want me, um, if there's the right moment to come back to, I'm not going to come back for like something that's kind of meh and it's not doing anything to, you know, there's sort of a a, a checklist I have, you know, um, mm-hmm. it has to forward something. It has to interest the fans. It has to be something unique and different. It has to challenge me. There's a few things, you know, and, um, you know, 2019, when, you know, uh, SummerSlam came to Toronto and, and Charlotte was sort of just available, I was like, oh my gosh, like her generation versus my generation, like that could be it, called Vince. And I was like, just an idea. I know it's only a couple of weeks away. I, I kind of see Charlotte doesn't have, like just what are the chances that Charlotte, one of the greatest wrestlers of all time, has nothing for SummerSlam, you know, at that point. Mm-hmm. And so we did that. And, you know, it, that was great to do that. And the fans really dug that. I truly thought, like I was surprised I went back and had a full-on match I was like whoa I did that you know um and so you know it um I I really thought that would be my last match you know and um and then I think I just I think what got the itch to be you know that we speak of uh, there was some live events in Toronto and Becky and I started a little war of words and it was fun you know her and I are very punny you know, and, uh, and, and of course that's, and it's funny because there's oftentimes I hear about the fantasy matchups and the moment Sasha Banks and I, for example, faced off in the Royal Rumble 2018 to this day, people talk about it. They, that's a fantasy match people. I mean, I'm not, I'm gonna lie. I love, I, that's fantasy match for me as well. Um, you know, it's, um, just people buzz about things and it makes you go, Oh, that would be interesting. So when Becky and I started going back and forth, um, people were interested and then, and I never thought of Becky for some reason I would do, and even I do a who's your dream match I would kind of I just kind of would say you know Sasha Banks I don't you know I don't know I guess you know it, but the, the idea of Becky and I facing off it became you know apparent that like we had a little something there uh, with just our, our our Twitter face off or you know so to speak uh, we got in the ring had that chemistry and you just know right away when you get in the ring with someone there's that we call it je ne sais quoi I, I don't know what you know it's something right there's um something and, and when I got in the ring with her we, we just knew we we're like oh this is this is good like we just knew that and I remember, though, at one point, people saying, like, would you come back? Would you do another run? And the thing is, I kept saying, I think for me as a performer to come back, like, I'd come back as a baby face. I'd done the whole, yay, you know. <laughs> but I thought as a performer, it would be great to be back as a heel. And I thought it would, you know, again, taking that knowledge and, and everything I learned as a younger performer to come back as a mature performer and be able to apply that and just approach it differently. And also like, I loved coming back and like, you know, doing the little callbacks and things like that. Like I knew that would be something I'd really want to do. Um, Becky was a heel for the longest time when we did that, she was a heel. And then she had that completely organic baby face change, right. Where like she turned because she got injured, left, came back and they're like, yeah, she's back, you know? And I was like, Oh man, maybe that's it. And we just get to talking and just felt like, you know, this could happen. And um, Vince, to be honest, had a problem with me coming back as a heel. He just was like, they're never going to boo you. I was like, just <laughs> let me do it, you know. So, um, you know, I think Hunter being involved um, really made a difference in the decision. And uh, initially, 
it was just for a little run, but it just was working so well. We just kept it going. And um, it was, yeah, it was great. And I, you know, I, I feel so thankful that I got that chance to go back and do that with, with you know, one of the greatest superstars of all time, Becky Lynch. Um, and and she was, you know, we had that chemistry in the ring and just we were able to create moments, um, you know, as, you know, those, those rivalries were just like when two people face off, you're like, those are the things you remember, those rivalries you talk mm -hmm. about years later. And for me personally, checking off bucket list stuff like you talk about i know this is one of your bucket list stuff so check but for me you know cage matches things like that were not available to us back in the day to be able to go back and do that i mean i i so blessed i feel so blessed well the cage match was killer we'll get, we're gonna get to that um <laughs> <laughs> i did two you know one thing that you were just talking about there particularly coming back the heel like I, I remember obviously like when i was a fan as a as a younger man and I was a big Trish Stratus fan, and then you screwed over Chris, uh, Chris, Jer Chris Jericho, and you aligned to Chris. Jer I was so upset. I was like, "Oh, I didn't see it. I didn't see it coming at all." Um, but when you when you came back, right, like talk me through that. How you know it sounds a lot like your pitches, and Vince had the open door, but Triple H has been really involved, uh, and obviously, well, he's the boss now. But he was really involved with women's wrestling and and making a lot of decisions down the years. So, how did that manifest into what we eventually saw? Because a lot of fans obviously had a lot to say that you weren't on SummerSlam, right? That's still like an ongoing thing of like, yeah. Uh, yeah. Obviously, the eventual match is amazing. We'll, I, yes. I, I will get to that. But um, yes. was there a, you know, you sound like you would have had very specific ideas of what you were going to do for your run. And then obviously, once they change something or, you know, SummerSlam isn't on there, yeah. how was that for you? Um, you know, to me, it's always important to maintain the integrity of your storyline. Um, and I think, yes, there was definitely that, you know, everyone talks about it. There was, it got stretched a little longer, you know, and, and it did, uh, sort of dilute things at the moment. Uh, I felt like maybe, you know, because look, I'm all about extending it. Like when Mickey James and I, we have this joking hashtag longest rivalry ever. I'm not sure if that still counts, but you know, we were so proud of the fact that we had a rivalry that lasted for so long, but it did have ups and downs, ebbs and flows. It really had other characters coming in and out. So it did that. Um, and so it's just, it was able to be sustained because of those things. I'm not saying that Becky's and I's didn't, but I feel like maybe, maybe they could have given us some extra tools to make it a little more interesting. It was like, promo, let's do a promo. How about we do a promo? Let's do a promo, let's do a promo. How about next week, we'll do a promo. You know, it's like, how much can we do, you know? Um, so like the interest was certainly there. And, and you know, there was times, and you can't let the internet get in your head because you'll go online and read that. People are like, oh, I'm not into this feud anymore. I'm, <laughs> I'm giving up on it. And it's like, but then we'll go to the live event and they're going wild and you're like, or, you know, or performing live and they're going wild. They're into it. You guys are into it. So there's the majority. Yeah, you're into it, right? I mean, yes, it would have been great. To be honest, timeline wise, if it went to this, to SummerSlam, perfect timing. However, let me point out the fact that um, we really wanted, we thought that this mat, this feud needed to culminate to a, like a cage match. It needed something big, like something. We were like, okay, now we've done it. Let's, let's really go at it. <clears throat> there was a stadium show for SummerSlam impossible to have a steel, a steel cage match so you know it was sort of like um you want to have an eight minute um regular match uh, on SummerSlam which is a jammed card or do you want to be highlighted and have 20 minutes and have a steel cage and kick off this amazing show I think we'll do that you know so was there four weeks that we have and then it was like oh shoot we got four weeks we still gotta go could we have uh fought for whatever could there have been a more creative four weeks to like not let interest wane or let people get sucky <laughs> uh, perhaps you know um but i mean the interest was certainly there and i just knew at the end of the day as long as we could deliver you know at the uh, at the end of the day that was what would uh people would talk about and would uh, remember so um yeah we got the great opportunity to have that cage match and woo, so much fun <laughs> let me tell you you did deliver you absolutely <laughs> did deliver i i i I've, i said it at the time and reported on it that i i think it's one of the all-time cage matches gender whatever right it doesn't matter who it was a great wow. match. thank um, you talk to me a little bit about you know putting that together um you know any, anyone who might have been involved and and just this you know, i was going to use a terrible pun then i'm going to resist the satisfaction do it. please do it i love puns <laughs> i was going to say really? satisfaction after it. it was so good but i'm just you know <laughs> that's terrible um <laughs> But, you know, again, the, the after bit where it's like, yeah, we did it. We we delivered what we set out to do because that is a memorable yep. match. 
Yeah, um, <clears throat> never been in one before. And it was, a. It, and I, I mean, people brought, brought it up that I had said in interviews, man, I'd love to go back and do a cage match. And I didn't really think about it, how like, did I just manifest that? But I, you know, it was, it just felt like that few needed it. It really was like the perfect endpoint for for that rivalry into, you know, where we had brought the story. Um, but preparing for it, I, I remember there was a phase where I was just like, ah, I think I need to put up a cage and step into it. I've never been in a, like, I just, I needed to brainstorm. I need to think about, I need to feel it. I, it was a new environment, right? To be in the ring is one thing. Um, and don't forget, I'm, you know, at this point, I'm, I've gotten back in the ring, so I'm comfortable now in the ring, but I'm like, oh, wait, but there's another level, another layer. It's the cage, you know? Um, and so they did set up the cage for me up at the PC. And I just remember just climbing it, sitting in it, being in it. And just like all these being flooded with ideas and just like things we could do. And I really wanted us to make sure we were, I really wanted to use the cage. You know, sometimes there's a match inside the cage, but it's just a match inside the cage. You know, they don't really use the cage necessarily. And I thought that, like, I really wanted to tell the story that, you know, I am going to get the hell out of this cage when I could and try and climb and, you know, whatever, and, 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 and use the cage as a weapon. And like, we really wanted to do that. And I think, um, you know, even the, the uh, hanging upside down spot to me, that was, that was for, you know, yeah, that was something that I thought would be really cool. Uh, I knew that like no guys had done that before because you, you literally couldn't get your legs up there. The guys can't do that, you know? So I was like, I need to do, I just want to do a little something different um, that, uh, you know, was safe, but um, would still kind of do the, do, have that moment, you know? Um, and yeah, it was just, it was, it was fun to put together and, um, you know, you have to just have no fear. And I really didn't, you know, I was ready to go for it. Um and Becky and I, you know, Becky's so great, right? She's, she's a hundred percent in, I, I'm, I'm a real, like anything, anything goes like, let's just do this and, and we'll think about it tomorrow kind of thing. And she is as well. Yeah. Um, and we, you know, like we had the pressure of like, you know, the, the little, you know, the, the fans kind of doing their thing and we're like, okay, we knew we had to deliver. And so we were just right on track, both on board. And, um, like, I'll just never forget the, the superplex from the top. It was a real, it was a kind of in a way, it was a weird, it was a, we, an intimate special moment for Becky and I, you know, we, we knew at this moment, this is a huge, people are going to go crazy. Um, but for us, we have to tr trust each other's bodies. This could go awry. It could, you never know, you know, and we just had to trust each other and trust the moment. Um, and, and, and we, we, I remember simply like, okay, let's go. And it was just like a simple, like it just, it was a very calm. I remember the fall was so long. I remember thinking, what, are we not there yet? Like it was just <laughs> like I never was going to hit that bottom. I had the similar feeling on one time Kane was uh, choke slamming me. And I remember, like, you know, he's what, seven feet, eight mm. feet tall with the arm. And I was like, I remember just coming down going, what, where's the mat? Like, I just felt like I was falling <laughs> forever. It was such a huge drop, you know, but yeah, um, just, I, I, it was a, a most serene, I, it sounds so bizarre, but the most serene, calming, quiet fall I ever had. Um, <laughs> and then hitting the mat, it was just like, we knew we successfully and safely landed. Fans went crazy. And it was uh, a moment to remember for sure. But, um, but you know, that takes two people to be, you know, completely committed and uh, willing to put their bodies on the line and trusting. Um, uh, and so, you know, so, so they do sometimes like they get it, you know, and I, even that, that there was a question mark on me doing that move as well on the top, the, you know, cause it looks wild, you know, mm. uh, and imagine just like during the day being like, oh my, you know, so <laughs> it looks wild. And I was just like, trust me, I've, I've done it at the playground, you know, it'll be fine. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. There's moments like that. And I mean, listen, there's moments where, where they win too, where, you know, just, we talked about the Jericho turn. Um, that was supposed to be me and Jericho finally together. And like, you know, the, if, we were going to be the it couple before Maurice and, and, and Miz were the it couple. Um, and, uh, and fans like you were waiting for that moment, right? It was like, we, it was months of like build up, build up, build up. And I mean, I remember him being a heel and then organically turned into a baby face because you guys wanted this union so much. And so we were waiting for that moment. And Vince that day on WrestleMania 20 says, so what we're going to do tonight, actually, we're going to switch it up. You're going to go with Christian. I was like, what, what, what? We were all like, wait, whoa, whoa. And we were, we were all resistant to it because we were like, no, but this is like, you know, and even you think the work you're doing, I'm like, we're working on foreshadowing. You know, you think of it as yeah, so yeah. I'm foreshadowing, you know, because they don't remember. Oh, remember she did that thing. It's it's fine. They'll be okay. The, he he was so right. The heel turn was everything, you know. And for me as a character, it was everything. It it completely turned my career on like a whole nother you know trajectory mm. at that point. So you know you know. So there's moments where you're like, no, I'm right. No, I'm right. Okay, you were right on that one. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. you know, listen, we all have been in the business for so long, and there's moments where something's very close to you. So you know, um, it's nice when you can trust your gut, and it's nice when people around you support you. I've got two more before I know that I, I have to let you go. Um, 
But the first and foremost, we've been talking about how, you know, Toronto live events pulled you back in and, you know, Charlotte and all of this great stuff. There's another date at Toronto in the calendar. Uh, from, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I know you've, you've had, you know, quite unquote your dream matches and you had that, you know, the great run, but is the door still open for you to say, hey, you know, if something uh, that, you know, what you would find exciting comes along, we could see Trish Stratus wrestling in Toronto? I mean, I've, listen, it's my continuous thing I've said since I retired. If it's the right moment, you know, if it's something that makes sense, um, it's, uh, will the fans like it? Um, <laughs> um, is it going to be with someone I can, I can advance that can, you know, I want to do something like, you know, coming back and work with Zoe for me personally was great because it was an, another layer, like Becky don't need my rub, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but it was an interesting feud and it's something like two characters, you, it was a fantasy matchup, a generational face-off w- unique. Um, you'd never think you could see that and you got to see that. So that was great. So check that box. Bringing in Zoe for me helped because I really felt like I wanted to not just be there selfishly for me. I want to be able to like, you know, give her something too, you know, and, and she was so great. And, and she added so much to her story. Um, uh, questionable actions at the end, of course, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> you know, but um, nonetheless, um, yeah. So that was a great element. So I always say, if I can, you know, check all these boxes, if I can add something different, if I can, you know, make something interesting with a unique approach to different characters, and, um, you know, then I'll do it. I'm, uh, and, and I also say, as long as I can go hundred percent, I'm never going to come back and be like, listen, I'm going to do this, but I'm only at like 60. So like, I'm mm. going to only do like half my moves. I'm not going to do that. You know what I mean? I want to give you hundred percent. And I never know until I get in, right. Like, you know, going back for WrestleMania, I mean, I actually had a, a, a partially torn hamstring during mania. So I wasn't even evil. I was put it this way. I managed to give a hundred percent when I probably shouldn't have given a hundred percent, put it that way. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, you know, I think that limp lasted a lot longer than it should have, but um, <laughs> it, it, it's, it's what I do. It's a hundred percent. If I can give you a hundred percent out there, that's what I can do. And so, you know, and so I, that's been my approach every time, you know, um, if I can, if they call, if, if the call comes, you know, what are we, is this in May or June or what, July, when is it July? I think it is. Yeah, oh, sure. Check. I might've circled it one second. Yeah. <laughs> if the call comes i'll have to check those boxes can i still go i'll get in the ring i'll see where i'm at and then see what the what the idea is and it's always about creative and making sure that it's something that will stratify the fans and uh you know be something exciting and different <laughs> uh final one for me then and this is uh you know going back as a fan i mean you was involved in loads of great segments um one of my favorites that i would love your kind of uh insight on day of vince mcmahon joins the kiss my ass club Right. You remember this back yes. in 2001 yourself. You, you obviously come out and tease that he will get to <laughs> that will be the initiation. And The Rock obviously turns it into Rikishi. Uh, yeah. I know, you know loads of people still replay that clip on on social media and stuff till to this day. Yeah. Um, have you got any memories of like, you know, when they were putting that together and the crowd at the time? Because you sounded like the roof came off and it's become kind of one of the all time funny segments. Yeah. I mean, I just, you know, I look back to a lot of those segments at that time that were so uh, interesting. You know, I, I love the fact, I love like mixing up with different char- characters. The fact that I could be in the ring with Rikishi, with Vince McMahon, with The Rock, uh, you know, it's like incredible, right? Mm. Um, and then creating those moments that like when the fans go mental crazy, where like, you know, like you said, the roof gets blown off. Um, I, I'm thrilled to be a part of it. I, I, I'm, you know, thankful for those moments that I was actually chosen to be a part of these moments. Um, yeah, that was, um, love the creative on that. Was just excited. I'm like, anytime I can get in there with The Rock, I'm like, of course, that sounds fantastic. Wow, you know? Um, and it, yeah, it's great. And, and like, yet again, when we're talking about it, I don't know how many, 20 years later, 15 years later, it's, it's stuck and it's memorable. And it's one of those iconic moments that people will always talk about. So to be a part of it and work with those, you know, superstars is always amazing. Um, you know, that I said about the roof coming off there, you was there. I always remember the pop when Linda McMahon stood up at yes. Rain, right? You yes. were there. That's one of my most memorable ones with you involved. Really? Have you yeah. got... Uh, have you got one just off the top of your head before we finish of like all time kind of crowd reaction when you're out there? For me, probably the hitting the sharpshooter. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. Like I didn't even, and you know, there was, because I got questions so many times, like, are you sure that should be, I was like, yeah, I feel like this. <laughs> yes. But you know, you get question marks where they're like, I don't know, should you do something that people know? Like it was just, there was so many people coming in. <clears throat> it was my important last match. So people were really, you know, caring about it in Toronto, yada, yada. 
Um, and I just knew this was the way to go. So I was like, I don't know. I hope this, you know, I hope they're into it. I hope they get it. You mm -hmm. know, so there was a moment I'm real defined, like I'm hitting the sharpshooter. Just okay, guys, you know. Yeah. Uh, you can tell that moment. Uh, but yeah, the reaction, people got it. I knew they would, you know, oh. it's like in Toronto, it, that was a moment. And, and you know, getting a, a text afterwards from Brett, you know, just oh, that. Wow. Just, yeah. Like that was just like, I was like, yeah, I, I, I thought so. <laughs> yeah. I knew this was supposed to be the moment, you know? <laughs> so um, yeah, for me, that was probably the, the, the biggest um, pop moment in my career. Yeah. I mean, fighting for it and it coming off amazing. Trish, you have also been amazing. I've enjoyed this. I can't tell you how much. Um, so grateful that you've given us the chance to speak to you today. I will see you again in London. I'll make sure to, uh, to, to introduce myself when I see you there. Can't wait for your Inside the Ropes tour. And I hope to see you in the ring again. I suspect yeah. I might. Uh, thank <laughs> you so much, Trish.